All right, for the final video in this series, let's learn how to handle authentication with React Router. When building web applications, you'll come across the need to protect some routes in the app from users who are not logged in. For example, in an e-commerce site, the products page might be publicly accessible, whereas the profile page or the order history page requires that a user be logged in. The React Router itself does not have a feature to protect routes, but you can implement the functionality without much difficulty. In this video, let's see how to protect routes using React Router and the context API from React. First, let me go over the scenario we will be implementing. In our app, we're going to add a new link in the navbar, which should take you to the profile page. But the profile page is a protected route. If you're not logged in, you'll be redirected to the login page. You can enter a username and click the login button. You will then be able to view the profile page, which displays the logged in username. You also have a logout button, on click of which you'll be navigated back to the home page. Pretty simple scenario, as you can see. Let's head back to VS Code and understand how to implement this. Now there is quite a bit of code we have to write and understand. So let's take this one small step at a time. Step one, let's create the profile page, add the link in the navbar and configure the corresponding route. In the components folder, create a new file called profile.js. Within the file, create a simple component that says profile page. In the navbar, add a new link to slash profile. So copy the nav link, paste it, and change slash profile. The link is also profile. In app.js, configure the new route. So route path is equal to profile and element is equal to the profile component. Make sure to import the component at the top. Let's save the file and test to see if this works. Click on profile and we have the profile page. Step one is complete. But we know this route should be a protected route and accessible only if the user is logged in. So for step two, we need to implement the functionality to figure out if the user is logged in or not. To keep it simple, we're going to maintain a user state variable and provide it to the entire component tree using React context. So back in VS Code, in the components folder, create a new file called auth.js. This file perhaps belongs in a separate utils folder, but I'm going to leave this in the components folder for now. Within the file, we're going to create an auth context. So at the top, import create context from React. Next, const auth context is equal to create context. And the initial value is going to be null. Next, we're going to define the auth provider component. So export const auth provider. This is equal to an arrow function. And within this component, we maintain the user state and define the functions to log in and log out. Begin by importing use state from React. Next, create the state variable. Let's call the variable user, the function set user, and the initial value is null. Now, use this set of function to define login and logout functions. So const login receives user, and we're going to call set user passing in user. Similarly, const logout doesn't receive any arguments, 
we're going to call set user passing in null. Now we're going to provide these values using the auth context provider. So return auth context dot provider and this is going to wrap the children props. The provider component needs a value prop and this is going to be equal to an object with the same key value pairs user, login, and logout. Make sure to destructure the children props. Finally, we're going to define a function that returns the value of auth context. So export const use auth is equal to a function where we return use context passing in auth context. Make sure to import use context hook at the top. All right, now that we have the auth context provider, in app.js, we wrap the entire component tree with auth provider. Make sure to import the component at the top. All right, we now have access to user, login, and logout functions throughout our application, which means we can now proceed with step three. For step three, let's implement a login route. In the components folder, create a new file called login.js. Within the file, create a simple component. Now this component needs to accept a username. So import use state at the top and create a new state variable user the function is set user and the initial value is an empty string this state variable should be tied to an input element so label username is going to be an input element type is equal to text and on change we get hold of the event and called set user passing in event dot target dot value next add a login button so button the text is going to be login and on click of this button let's assign a function called handle login let's define the function so const handle login is equal to arrow function and within the function we need to call the login function from auth context for that, call use auth, which is to be imported from the auth file, and assign the return value to a constant called auth. This should in fact be outside handle login. Within handle login, call auth.login passing in the username. Once we set the username, we navigate the user to the home page. For that, we use the use navigate hook. So at the top, import use navigate from React Router DOM. And within the component, const navigate is equal to use navigate. And then within handle login, navigate to the root. Finally, add a login button in navbar. Now the button should only be shown if the user is not logged in. So once again, get hold of the auth context. So const auth is equal to use auth and make sure to import it at the top. Then in the JSX, curly braces, if not auth.user, so if the user is not logged in, render a link so nav link, and this should be to the login route, and the text is also login. Once we have the new link, let's configure the route. So make a copy of this, path is going to be login, and the element is going to be the login component. Make sure to import the component at the top. So step three is complete. For step four, Let's display the logged in username in the profile component and also add a logout button. To display the username, 
we once again rely on auth context. So const auth is equal to use auth. And make sure to import it at the top. Import use auth from the auth file. Within the JSX, welcome auth.user. And now to log out, let's add a button. So button, the text is going to be log out. And on click, let's assign a function called handle logout. Let's define this function. const handle logout is equal to an arrow function. And within the function, call auth.logout. After logging out, we redirect the user to the home page. So again, at the top, import use navigate from React Router DOM, call the hook. and within the function body, navigate to the root. With that, we have completed the login and log out feature for our application. Let's head to the browser and ensure it is working as expected. Click on login and we are at the login route. Enter Vishwas and click the login button. We are navigated to the home page. Click on Profile and we see Welcome Vishwas. Click on Logout and we are back at the home page. Everything is perfect. Except, of course, for the most important bit in this video, which is that Profile is still not protected. So, for step number five, let's protect this profile route. Now, protecting a route should be a reusable piece of code. At the moment, we just have to protect the profile page, but we might have more protected pages in the future. So we're going to create a reusable wrapper component that decides if the component can be rendered or if the user has to log in first. In the components folder, create a new file called require auth Dot js. Within the file, create a component. Within the component, get hold of the auth context. So const auth is equal to use auth. Make sure to import it at the top. Now we check if the user is not logged in. So if not auth.user, and if this is the case, we redirect the user to the login route. And we do that using the navigate component from React Router. So at the top, import navigate from React Router DOM. And within the if block, we're going to return the navigate component with a to prop is equal to slash login. So back to the login route. If the user is logged in, however, we're going to return the children prop. So destructure it and return children. Now, all we have to do is in app.js, wrap the profile component with require auth. So in the element prop, require auth is going to wrap the profile component. Make sure to import require auth at the top. Let's now head back to the browser. Refresh, and we are currently not logged in. Click on profile, and you can see we are redirected to the login route. Login, and we are on the home page. Click on profile, and we can now see the profile page. Log out, and we are redirected to the home page. Our protected route is working as expected. Now, although this works great, there is room for improvement. If we log in and click the back button, 
we are at the login page again. To fix this, in login.js, on the navigate function, add a second argument. Replace set to true. If you now refresh, login, and click the back button, we don't see the login route anymore. Another improvement we can do is redirecting the user back to the protected route after the login. Right now, I click profile and login. You can see that I'm at the home page. It would be nice if I was back at the profile page. For that, we're going to work with state when navigating. In require auth component, at the top, import use location from React Router. Within the component, call the hook. Const location is equal to use location. Next, on the navigate component, pass in the state prop. State, and we pass in an object with a key called path, which is equal to location.pathName. We can make use of this state in the login component. At the top, import use location again and invoke the hook. const location is equal to use location. Next, check if the path is set on the state object and use the same as the redirect path. So const redirect path is equal to location dot state and if it is set, access the path. If not, navigate to the root. Pass in redirect path to navigate. Let's test this now. Refresh, click on profile, log in, and we are back at profile. Log out, and we are directed to the home page. Authentication and protected routes with React Router has been successfully implemented. And there's a lot to understand here, so let me summarize the steps. First, we created the profile route, which should be protected. Next, we implemented the functionality to log in and log out a user. For that, we relied on React context and provided the context value to the entire component tree. After that, we implemented the login page. We used the auth context to sign in and the navigate function to redirect. In the profile page, we used the same auth context to display the logged in user and handle the logout button. Finally, we created the require auth component that checks if the user is logged in or not. If the user is not logged in, it redirects to the login route. If the user is logged in, it renders the children prop. We wrap any component that needs to be protected with the require auth component. And this is done when we configure the particular route. Last but not the least, we used replace to prevent the user from viewing the login page after logging in and a bit of use location magic to keep track of the redirection. So this is pretty much how you handle authentication with React Router. With that, we come to the end of the series on React Router. I promised I would create the series when version 6 is out, and hopefully I haven't disappointed anyone. If you found the series helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.